Hello, St. James Lutheran Church. This is your pastor speaking, and I'm, I'm speaking to you from my back garden. That's actually the, the back wall of my garden is the back wall of the parish hall of the church. But here I am in my garden on a sunny, late winter's day. More about why I'm here in just a moment. What I want to um, speak to you about is the collective history in prayer God has given us together, pastor and people, uh, in, in recent months. Now, of course, I am speaking about all the prayer that was raised to God, earnest prayer for my health and recovery around uh, Christmas time. And uh, I thank you again for that. Uh, I was in danger, but here I am now in answer to prayer, God's hand upon me in the pink of health, and it feels um, great to be going forward. But I also want you to know that I was praying. Um, in the weeks leading up to, to that time, I had been pouring myself out for what? Especially for the Christmas walk around. God just burdened my heart that people come to faith in Christ and, and the opportunity God had given us in this Christmas walk around. And I was praying for, even on, that, on December 23rd, as I was in the hospital, I was praying for you here at the church, that, that, that the Holy Spirit's power working through what people were doing. And there were wonderful answers to prayer. Great weather that night. I'm, we reported three to 400 people came out. They had a terrific experience and did see what God depicted, what God had done on that holy night and had done for them and wonderful things had happened. God's given us a collective history of breakthrough kinds of prayers. And I want us to pray again for breakthrough, but now for the Easter family Easter walk around coming up in just a few weeks. What will that be? It's going to be the day before Easter, Saturday, April 3rd. And it'll be a lot like the Christmas walk around, except the events depicted will be those of Holy Week. Uh, it'll start over by the parking lot with a depiction of Palm Sunday. They'll be waving the palms and Jesus will walk along like kind of a donkey thing, probably not a real donkey. Um, and uh, Jesus will go to the temple. He'll cleanse the temple. There will be uh, the Last Supper depicted, um, the uh, dramatic trial scene with, with Herod. Uh, then they're going to we'll go into the parish hall. This, there'll be one little bit inside, in, in, uh, in the parish hall, where with silhouettes and lighting, the, the cross, will, uh, the crucifixion will be depicted. It's, we've done it before. It's very dramatic. And then people will come out of the parish hall. Could you follow me with the camera, please? And they're going to come out of the parish hall and through this garden gate and into our back garden, where we will have uh, the tomb set up. Right where this chimney is, the chimney will be gone, the tomb will be set up, the stone rolled away, and the people will be standing about where this is being filmed from. And, uh, you know, the women will come to the tomb, and uh, uh, the angel will announce to them, he's not here, he is risen, as he said. And then they'll meet with Jesus, in depicted such life-changing things. After that, they'll make their way to the front of the church, we'll sing... Um, Jesus Christ is risen today. There'll be a prayer and they'll receive once again some excellent literature to explain briefly but excellently um, the things that they have seen depicted. I'm asking that we would rise as a church. Jesus would gather his people, us, to pray for this. God answers prayer and when you need miracles, you need prayer. Would you pray specifically for this? Three things. And if you don't write it down, you might want to rewind the type and get it written down. Three things. First of all, that hundreds, why not, if we had three to four hundred people, why not six hundred plus people would come and that they would hear and see and understand the events that God did in Holy Week. They need the facts first. The second thing, that they would believe, would be a, a thing in their heart, that they would believe in God's uh, love, uh, in God's forgiveness, and in the new life in Christ that God gives to sinners, that people would turn from what they have been seeking life from and now seek it in Jesus who died for them and rose from the dead. This is a miracle. The change that has to happen in a heart to believe that is akin to Jesus rising from the dead. Would you pray for resurrection power in their hearts to believe, to believe? And thirdly, that they make a connection uh, with a place where they can, if they're coming to faith or they've come to faith, uh, where they can grow in that. 
like St. James Lutheran Church or another church, but here's our church, ready, open, and willing to receive people and have them grow. Those three things. In the Bible, in 1 Timothy 2, verse 4, it says that God desires all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Pray for all people. Pray for our whole town, all of Smithton, all of Brookhaven. <laughs> Why not to come? As we lift up Jesus in our um, walk around uh, on Saturday, April the 3rd, would you be leading up to that, be praying for your neighbor specifically, your neighbors and friends? And I am asking St. James Lutheran Church that you would pray for this every day between now and then. You might want to sit on your uh, phone a, a time, you know, every day at 12.05 or 8 o'clock in the morning. Or, ding! That's when I pray. And pray for them earnestly and intently. I am confident that we cannot succeed without prayer. But I am also very excited about the promises that Jesus has made about prayer in his name and about what's going to happen and about the lives that are going to change and about the light that is going to make it into hearts as a result of us joining with the risen Christ on this mission and joining with him right now in prayer. Please join me and we'll join together with Jesus in this mission. God bless you.